Mr. Rack uh, himself. Hi, my name is Daniel. Today we will talk about patching Oracle Grid infrastructure. Yeah, so with me today, uh, we have Mr. Rack uh, himself, Anil Nair, product manager and at Oracle responsible for, for Rack. Uh, hi, Anil, and welcome. Hey, so, so nice to be here. You know, I've heard wonderful things about this. So I'm happy to be here, happy to talk to you. Ah, okay, cool. Uh, well, let's just uh, dive right into it. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of patching uh, to learn it myself and to get practice with it. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I've learned that there are multiple ways you can do in-place patching and out-of-place patching, and out-of-place patching has multiple ways. Uh, so, so which method is actually your own uh, personal favorite? <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a good question to start with. So first of all, yes, let me give you a little bit history of why we came up with all this kind of permutation and combination, right? So back in the day, uh, you know, long time ago, people were very happy to have their Oracle home forever so if you have oracle home you have one app oracle you know whatever you have 9i whatever under that 10g um, up, you know that was the permanent uh spot for it um they did not generally like changing homes because that means changing a whole lot of scripts around it and stuff around it so we have this we have had this uh, feature for the longest time where we have in place patching which is basically you patch on the home itself um as we evolved into the you know later years we found out that there are a lot of issues that certain customers would face for example some customers would have less than say 100 mb free and then they're trying to apply a patch of 200 mb that would not work out right obviously um and there are other things that we found out that we could optimize for example certain other customers would say i have more than 20 gig 20 gig left why are you you know putting it in the same place why don't you do it outside so we came up with this solution which is out of place patching so out of place patching is what i would recommend because it takes away some of the complexities around uh, things like let's say if you're during your patching somebody press control c if it's in place it's a whole lot of work to undo it and fix it and remember all this time you're down so also, uh, if I want to uh, ensure patching success, are there any uh, top tips that you can then give me? Any pointers that should make it easier to, to patch GI? Yes, yes, yes. Actually, that's a, a, another very good question because sometimes certain patches have certain requirements. Now, if you have seen over the years, we have uh, improved uh, the Clue Verifier cluster verification utility to do certain kinds of checks. Uh, for you. For example, you may have noticed that if you apply an RU or if you go to apply an RU, it will tell you, oh, stop. I don't want you to apply this RU because this RU requires a one-off which you should apply in your environment because certain customers using certain configuration found that that thing is necessary. So that way you don't actually go through the process of suffering the, the issues like the other customers do. So this is something I always recommend. I always, uh, you know, although it is done automatically, I would always recommend you run this because it will also check for a whole lot of other things like permissions. Um, the other thing, as I keep saying with Clue Verific, uh, cluster verification utility, which we call as Clue Verify, uh, is that it also checks for your existing system. Let's say you have a, permission problem on some of the uh, files owned by the in, in the grid infrastructure we tell you we call that out say hey before you start patching why don't you fix it um, in fact we also try to fix it for you by generating fix up scripts so these are some of the things you should watch out for the other thing which i highly recommend is uh, understand this concept of draining now draining is basically a serve ctl attribute that you can set to your service. So using Surf CTL, you can set up to uh, an attribute called drain timeout. It basically lets you know move, it moves, it lets you move your sessions connected to the instance so to some other instance in a phased way. So let's say you have 10,000 connections on the instance. If you just do it, all right, uh, shut it down, you know, somewhere else, another instance, these 10,000 connections need to connect. That's not going to be good for performance. So you, if you do drain out or drain timeout, say 10 minutes, 
then over some period of time, we will move connections so that your end user doesn't even feel that there is any kind of issue. So drain timeout is my, I would say definitely use it. It's just a very simple serve CTL, modify, service and drain timeout and you have it. Okay, and, and the drain timeout will play together with uh, when you do patching with, with, with Opatch? Yes, so that is what um, uh, I think is brings us to kind of this the part of the question that I should have answered earlier about, um, you know, there are so many ways to patch, right? You, know, you started off with this, you have Opatch Auto, and then you have Opatch, what do you want to do? And this is where it gets into the customer scenarios. We give you all different choices. Um, so this is, I would say, consider these things and then decide which you want to use. Right? Uh, if you have those kind of databases, well, lots and lots of connections, um, then Opatch Auto, what it does is it'll say, all right, I'm going to patch one node and I'm going to go to the other node. There is no, uh, what do you say, pause in between. So obviously, if you have to use train timeout, you want to make sure you do it in a phased manner using Opatch or some other mechanism so that it that, that train timeout can be completed before we start going to the second node and, and so on and so forth. Um, I had a talk with uh, Fidi Fjerns the other day about Oracle fleet patching and provisioning. How do you see that product play together with uh, with, with uh, patching GI? Very, very good question. Again, I keep saying that because the order and, you know, is kind of like um, um, uh, based on building blocks, which we, which we have Opatch and all that. And then top of it, we have this FPP. So FPP was something that was created specifically for customers who have a large fleet of databases. Now, yes, you know, the techie in me and the techie in Daniel, they want to run all this uh, Opatch commands, see the output, look at all those XML files. It feels great. Uh, but if you do it once, good. If you do it 100 times, it's not so fun anymore. So FPP really lets you manage things at a broader scale, at a higher scale. Uh, in fact, it's so good we use it in our own cloud that okay. we, we, it makes it so much easier. Um, and FPP has a lot of other things that you can insert. So for example, if say customer A says, oh no, no, we also do this along with the database. Well, if you have a script, we can call it for you from FPP. So I would say if you have less than three databases to manage, this is my rule, not uh, Oracle's rule. This is Anil Nair's rule. Third, four, the fourth and fifth time running Opatch is not a fun thing. Let FPP take care of it and it'll do it for you in a consistent manner. So this is really very cool. So I would say FPP, go for it if you have a you know large um, uh, implementation, regardless of the database version of the platform, it helps you. Uh, thanks for the tips, Anil, and thank you for your time. Oh, thank you for having me and thank you for discussing these very, very important questions. Really interesting cool. and thanks once again.